Hey ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. As always, it is Nick here, back there, Daily Crypto News and Analysis. And today we're going to be talking about Quant Network, aka q and I know it's been a while since I've actually made a video on it, so let's just dive in and let's talk about a few things. So yeah, as the market structure is like really kind of determining on, hey, are we going to break 20K or what on Bitcoin? I am looking forward to seeing those targets on q and being hit in terms of my buy range. Now, I do believe that uh, around like the you know forty dollar range, it was like a perfect time to really kind of accumulate this when we did drop down to like forty two dollars. Um, but I'm actually really kind of looking at and seeing where we can really kind of drop down to on Q and I mean, like realistically speaking, I'm waiting to see if we test the summer lows at around like roughly thirty one dollars, um, and see if that does hold. If that doesn't, then you know we're looking at like the yearly lows, which the yearly lows back here are like. In terms of like support range, you could actually lead all the way down. And I know that this is actually going to surprise a lot of people, but like this could actually lead down to like roughly like the $10 uh, to roughly like $15 range. Now, am I expecting that? No, not realistically speaking. I'm really kind of just analyzing a $30 to $40 range on Q&T. Like that's where I'm going to be accumulating heavily. Um, but I've outlined this multiple times. I might actually make a video and going in detail on like my new structure on QNT on my um, you know website and cashofficial.com, but you know for the most part we are seeing some nice accumulation happening. The uh, bars are getting a little bit more you know taller here as we do kind of move on into like you know a deeper range within you know QNT. So that's good to see. Um, trading volume is only up about like 13%. Um, but right now you know there's really not that massive of a demand around crypto itself. So. Um, it still is interesting to see like, you know, tokens like QNT losing a ton of value because like to me, it's more like I don't really see the red. I more so like just see dollar signs because it's a time to really kind of analyze like, listen, why did you even invest in QNT in the first place? Like what really made you, you know, put money in? Um, because that's what you really need to understand, like why you are actually invested into QNT. To me personally, it's the longevity of the investment that really matters to me. And uh, honestly, when we look at the upside potential in QNT, it truly is something remarkable. Uh, which takes me to my next, uh, you know, talk here. So we look here, and here's a screenshot from 2011. So it's from Thomas Randolph, and he's saying, you know, well, Bitcoin has stabilized at almost exactly $14 per coin. I'm tired of waiting for a jump, so I'm, t you know, taking the loss and getting my cash back. And, um, you know, I really don't want you guys to be this person. When we look at, you know, this market. And, you know, we kind of compare and contrast like QNT to Bitcoin, for example. I've always said, and I, and I still stand by this statement, QNT is the next Bitcoin. Um, we look at the all-time chart and we go back in time. I know that, you know, for example, like CoinMarketCap only goes back to like roughly 2013. But around this range is also like a pretty interesting time to look at because like we hit, you know, back here roughly like the over $1,000 range at the 2013 um, all-time highs. Now, before this actually happened, you do see it like trading at like $133 before it collapsed down to like roughly $76 and it went on that ma massive move. Again, you know, bear market lows, we came down to like roughly test $200. Um, here it is sitting at like almost $400 before it collapsed a little bit. And uh, you see the next major move here. I mean, massive gains. So, you know, again, when we look at Q&T and we kind of look at like, you know, we'll just say like four to five years similar to like what the time frame is on this tweet, you know, and you kind of look back on what Q&T was, you know, these prices that we see in this market long term do not matter. It does not matter, you know, if you are holding long term right now, like you look at these prices and it's just an, you know, immediate buy in my opinion. So, you know, right now you really have to analyze like, why are you holding Q&T? Or what is your time frame on holding Q&T? Because that's what really kind of determines on if you should be, you know, averaging in or not. To me, averaging into like Q&T around like the $45 range, um, just it, it's a no-brainer move to me. So, you know, again, for q and it, it, it's just an incredible opportunity at, at, at the current moment. We also do see here from the blockchain media, uh, they're saying, you know, Q&T is revolutionary, quant. And this is exactly why, like I say, like, you know, Q&T is the next Bitcoin. A lot of people will talk down on like, Q&T is not utilized at all in the process. Dude, people have been saying that about like Ripple. 
They've been saying, or I should say, like XRP with Ripple. Uh, they've been saying that about like HBAR with Hedera. They will continue to say that about almost every single token. The token's barely being utilized in the process. UNT is being utilized in every single transaction that is made on Overledger. Um, all of the enterprise grade customers, clients, whatever the case may be, that are signed up onto the Overledger operating system have to hold and transact with QNT. This drives demand. It also drives scarcity within the tokenomics. Tokenomics on Bitcoin are actually worse than quant. That should tell you exactly, you know, why QNT itself, you know, with the, you know, utility behind it and with the massive operating system that will essentially connect everything to one, it really kind of proves to you exactly where QNT is positioned. And I'm not saying, you know, Bitcoin's tokenomics are bad. I'm just saying like, you know, it, it doesn't have, you know, as good tokenomics as quant. And uh, also, you know, we do see here. UNT, begged EU's largest payment provider, begged third largest tech company, Oracle, uh, building the Latin and UK CBDC, positioned to be one of crypto's most dominant players, best tokenomics in the game, no inflation, majority supply circulating. Uh, still CT sleeps, why? And shout out to Hyper Quam fee for this, but yeah, I mean, honestly, when you look at things like, man, it, it's funny to me, like nobody pays attention to these assets until they break out. It kind of reminds me of like Zillica, right? I don't know if you guys, uh, I mean, I'm sure like, you know, you guys are probably here just watch like Q&T videos and things like that. Um, I was making videos on Zill uh, multiple times uh, when we were like in a massive downtrend before like we broke out initially. Um, I was making a ton of videos on Zillica, talking to you guys about the ecosystem, talking to you guys about like why I do believe that like Zillica in terms of like the metaverse is going to be a huge play. No, no views, like literally like bare minimum views. All of a sudden, you know, Around this time, I make a video and I'm like, you know, Zill is ready to explode. Boom. We had a massive spike. We ran all the way up to like 18 cents from, again, by the way, bottom price of like roughly three cents. Boom. 10,000 plus video views. The same exact thing is going to happen with, you know, for example, like Quant. And I'm not saying like views matter. I'm just saying like people don't care about these tokens until things like this actually happen. It's interesting, right? Because like, we look at what Quan's doing. I mean, look at all of the updates around what Quan's doing. Look at the team behind it. You know, in my opinion, like there's no reason for it not to go to $1,000 plus. And uh, I, I think that like when we talk about like, you know, even crypto Twitter, like, yeah, I mean, engagement rates have been dropping within Q&T's tags too. Like it's insane to me that nobody's paying attention to what Quant is building. So you guys watching this video, what I want you to do is... You know, share Quant um, everywhere. Talk about it all day long. Tag it on Twitter. Because honestly, not a enough people know about what QNT is doing. And you know what? Technically speaking, that's a good thing as well. Because we accumulate and they will FOMO in and pump our bags. And uh, we also do here, you know, we put a gateway in front of the blockchain. Uh, that way, two blockchains can talk to each other, you know, through their gateways, but also talk to legacy applications and traditional applications through that. It's insane, though. Like, you know, when we look at these quotes, you know, not only has Quant, you know, solved interoperability between blockchains, which has been solved before. Like, I, I think that that's like the biggest argument point um, around Quant as well. Like, you know, for an example, like, this like in terms of like talking between like blockchains you know if you will like gossip protocols if you will um that has been solved by like atom been solved by link etc but what hasn't been solved by these major other applications or projects is this legacy applications traditional applications these are legacy and traditional systems essentially being able to be communicated with through again blockchain so all of this will be interconnected, similar to what I just showed you guys on this screen, like where we have the massive connection to, again, Quant's, you know, operating system. It's truly something special. It, it truly is. And we also do here, are you looking forward to the next LDN Tech Week session? Um, we do here, what should we expect from the future of the internet? Our take, much like the early siloed days of the web, the success of Web3 depends on interoperability. You know what this means? It means that the fate of crypto, the future of crypto will be determined by quant. And you guys might be wondering, well, what are you talking about? 
Well, it's simple. You know, when we look at where we currently are within this market, we are at this moment in time where enterprises, corporations, giants around the world within the brand area want to utilize crypto technology. But the problem is having that interconnectivity between the legacy system and these major use cases. It, it, it's, a, it's a stifling problem. Okay, and having that ability to have something like, for an example, like the Internet of Things to be interconnected within the you know, crypto scene, that's a huge use case. That's major. Okay, and the fate and the reason why, like I say, like the fate of crypto in terms of like the adoption cycle and the success, you know, lies within what Quant can do is because we will not continue to expand and be adopted if we don't have that interconnectivity between the legacy system and DLTs. And we actually do see here on their products list, the solutions we provide our customers, you know, are built utilizing the same patent pending products we, you know, make available to our partners and developers. And again, you do see the solutions here. Like here you have everything through Overledger and then you have all the blockchain networks. Everything will be interconnected through the Overledger, Core Overledger API, premium, you know, Overledger APIs. And then you have the, like the third party solutions and quant solutions. It all starts with Overledger. Overledger is the world's first blockchain agnostic API gateway. It enables interoperability by connecting businesses to multiple uh, distributed ledger networks. All of these DLTs in this market will be utilized. And they're, they're all going to be connected through a DLN. That, that's exactly what's going to happen here. And uh, we do see universal interoperability providing a secure, simple, and cost-effective API connection to all major DLTs. Overledger's highly module uh, you know, in architecture offers universal interoperability throughout the continuous addition of DLT and API connectors. When we look at this, this is the tech stack that we want. Okay, this is going to be, you know, I would say like, this is going to be the fundamental foundation uh, for where like, you know, crypto basically builds to. Um, because this is going to be the foundation, you know, I would say under what all the use cases, the metaverse, NFTs, everything that we see on a day-to-day -day basis, this is going to be the underlying tech stack. This is what's going to allow adoption and utilization to actually happen between crypto, you know, use cases and the legacy systems or just like real, you know, world applications. This is why I say like quant is fundamentally changing the entire landscape for what crypto adoption actually looks like. This is also why I say like, you know, people need to be put on and, and pay attention to what Quant's doing. It's so much more than just like, hey, you know, th they have, you know, interoperability between like CBDCs. No, it is so much more than just that. It is truly unleashing the potential and the power behind DLTs. And honestly, when we look at like the names that will be essentially, you know, building on and building with Overledger, it's going to be truly something special. I do believe that like all the, the volume and all the value transacted over like a specific DLT, we'll just say like the XRP Ledger, for example, all of that value and volume will also move over the, you know, Quant Overledger uh, network. The reason why I say that is because, you know, XRP's Ledger, like, you know, in terms of like a DLT, is not going to be the only DLT adopted by major, you know, entities. It's going to be other DLTs as well. You're going to see Hedera, uh, XLM, you know, etc. Like these are all, you know, networks that will essentially be utilized and they're not going to all be able to, you know, be utilized properly without interoperability. So Quant is ultimately, you know, changing the entire broad landscape of crypto and I'm here for it and I'm very excited for the future of what quant could really unlock and i'm also you know excited for the future of just quant in general as a token um because i truly do believe in like you know we'll just say like five years the price of q and t is going to drastically change so with that being said i hope that you guys enjoyed this video if you guys did definitely leave a like subscribe to notifications out if you guys want free content you guys are more than welcome to follow me on twitter and join the free discord down in the description below as those up to you all have a beautiful day or beautiful night wherever you guys are in this beautiful world this has been nick peace out guys